Okay. Well, we did have quite a few people signed up, but I am going to go ahead and get us started uh, because uh, we do have a lot to go over. Uh, I want to get as much of this in for you as I possibly can. So uh, for those of you who I haven't met before, my name is Scott, and uh, I am coming to you from Silver Spring, Maryland, uh, right outside of Washington, D.C., uh, I am uh, a uh, get set up guide focusing mainly on photography related classes, including photo management classes. Um, just want to let you know that um, we are recording this. Um, and uh, that's mostly for uh, internal quality control purposes. But if you do, uh, if, if you would like a copy of the recording, you can get that. Just uh, email us at help at getsetup.io. Uh, I'll, I'll have that up on the screen before we close today. Uh, and uh, that will, um, uh, and just request a recording for this class and we'll get that, uh, get that sent to you uh, via email. Um, I do wanna stress that uh, Get Set Up is an educational platform only. We don't uh, have any business relationships with any of the products or services uh, that we mention or have classes on. Uh, so this is uh, purely a, uh, edu for educational purposes to uh, give you one option for managing your digital photos. Uh, I will be sending out an email when we close today with uh, some takeaways from the class uh, and a couple of additional links uh, for you. Um, and um, that will uh, uh, help you uh, if you need some reference too. Okay, um, and I see that question there. Um, Lina, could you maybe answer that question for Sandy? Okay. Um, I am going to, I think everybody is on mute. I'm gonna ask because we have a large crowd today uh, that um, keep yourself on mute unless you have a question. There's something really uh, granular or very specific to your situation. I may hold that till later in the class uh, so that we get some of the general um, uh, matters, uh, general instruction out of the way. So, okay. So I am uh, gonna share my screen and get us started. Okay, um, what I want to uh, walk through today with you is, um, uh, and before I do that, I did put up a uh, poll. Um, probably should get the lay of the land first. I'm gonna launch that. If people could quickly uh, let me know if they have a Google Photos account already. Okay, great. So I will walk through that part of it. So let me go back here. So we'll talk about uh, setting up and managing a Google Photos account, how you go about doing that. Uh, we'll talk about um, how the app organizes your photos for you. Uh, it doesn't take total control away from you, but it does a lot of the work for you and how to search and find photos uh, very easily. Uh, and then we'll also talk about sharing pictures from, uh, from your Google library, uh, Google Photos library. Um, if there's anything specific though that you do wanna learn today, feel free to drop that in the chat right now and uh, <clears throat> I'll stop for questions uh, as we go along and I can check on those too. Um, okay, so I already asked that. So let's talk about what Google Photos is. Um, if you're not familiar with it, it is a cloud service. That means that it uh, is a service that allows you to store uh, copies of your data, including your photos, uh, in this case, your photos, um, online as backup. So it's sort of like an offsite digital storage locker for you or storage uh, facility. Uh, it can do that automatically. Uh, you can set it up to do that, say from your phone. Uh, you can just set up the uh, automatic backup and everything that you take a picture of will be backed up into that cloud. Um, it will also um, uh, synchronize that across all your devices. So you, uh, you just need to have the Google Photos app downloaded to say your smartphone or your tablet and uh, you can look at your photos on any one of those devices. All of this is gonna come in handy if 
uh, you happen to lose your phone uh, where a lot of your photos are sitting uh, or it's stolen or breaks or something like that, you have the peace of mind of knowing that your photos are still backed up on Google Photos. Uh, it also makes it very easy to share individual photos or albums of photos with other people. Uh, I'll walk through how that's done. And then lastly, um, this is where we get into the organization aspect of it. It identifies objects and places and faces in each photo and categorizes them accordingly to make it real easy for you to search and find a specific photo you might be looking for. Um, so I want to quickly talk about Google's uh, storage plans because um, uh, it's changing and people I'm sure want to know how much they get for uh, free and how much they would need to pay for in terms of the storage space. Um, most of these storage uh, uh, online cloud storage uh, options anywhere from Dropbox to Amazon Drive and Google included uh, are uh, offering some number of gigabytes of free space for you. Um, whether that be documents, uh, contacts, calendars, things like that. Uh, Google has an entire suite of services that you can, cloud services that you can get. Uh, and that might include uh, Google Docs. So if you have some documents on there, calendars, uh, there's something called Google Drive uh, where you can store some of your uh, documents and other items if you want. Uh, but uh, you do get 15 gigabytes of free space for uh, any of those services that you're subscribing to. Uh, if you are only using Google Photos uh, as backup there, uh, you get 15 gigabytes of free space right now for original quality photos and videos. So when I'm talking about original quality, I'm meaning that it's stored in the same resolution in which you took that. So if you have a uh, Android phone, for example, um, I, I use an iPhone, but I've read that there are some Android phones like a Samsung Galaxy uh, that now take pictures in, with like 16 or 64 megapixels uh, or even higher, as many as uh, 100 megapixels. Um, that means your photo is in higher resolution. The more megapixels you have, the more you could say blow that photo up to poster size. Um, uh, or, or larger, something that you could mount on your wall. Um, it all, Google also right now is offering unlimited free space for what they're calling high quality photos. Uh, and those are uh, taking your original quality photos and reducing them down to 16 megapixels, which is still gonna be fine if you wanna get say five by seven prints or six by four prints or something like that. Uh, they reduce it down so it preserves some space because the higher the resolution, the more space that that uh, photo is going to take up in, in your storage. And keep in mind, again, if uh, you're using anything else uh, like a, a Google Docs or anything like that, it's going to count toward that too. If you're only using it to store photos, 15 gigabytes is going to store probably about 5,000 photos which may sound like a lot, but uh, it is um, uh, pretty amazing how uh, quickly that fills up. Now, things are changing. Uh, as of June 1st, that unlimited free option ends. Google is discontinuing that. Uh, so all photos, regardless of the quality uploaded after that date, will count toward that 15 gigabyte limit for free storage. Beyond that, and you'll have to start uh, paying, and they have a, uh, three or four tiers for that. Uh, now, that means that anything you've already got up there in your account is grandfathered in. You will keep that uh, er those original quality photos in there without having to pay anything extra. But anything you upload then uh, after that will build up toward that 15 gigabytes, and then uh, you'll go into these. Uh, plans, uh, you can pay $20 a year for 100 gigabytes, depending on else you're storing on there, that could store up to um, up to 30,000 photos 
Um, and uh, so that's uh, some pretty ample space. $40 a year will double that, 200 gigabytes. You can get about 60,000 photos there. And $120 a year, that gives you two terabytes. And that uh, could store as many as uh, half a million photos. So that is what they have in terms of storage plans. I'm going to stop there and see if there are any questions on those, because I know that's a little confusing. I have a question. Um, when you say it's original quality, but it does reduce it to 16 megapixels, what does a typical photo like, say, from your iPhone give you? Um, well, actually, um, the iPhone, in terms of uh, the resolution, is not nearly as good as what you would get with a lot of the Android phones. Uh, I have probably one of the latest, I don't have an iPhone 12, but I have an iPhone 11 Pro Max. <laughs> And it's still only taking photos uh, at 12 uh, megapixels. So if you're using your phone, especially if you're using an iPhone, uh, for most of your photos, you're probably uh, pretty fine right now and not having to uh, worry about exceeding that uh, original quality uh, threshold or, or high quality threshold, I'm sorry. Scott, if you bring up a picture in the reduced quality, can you um, have it ramped back up to the regular quality on your um, photo um, app? Um, once it's backed up there, it's going to stay there. If you decide uh, to go upgrade to, to be able to store the original quality, what you already have on your device, uh, that original quality would uh, then sort of replace what you already had there. Right, that's all there. But if I was just like, if my original device went kaput and I was pulling up out of the Google Cloud um, something they, in the reduced quality, that's yeah. that's how it is. Okay, yeah. got yeah. it. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, um, I'm seeing this question from Deborah. I'm going to get back to that because I'm going into uh, the backup and sync, and I'm wondering if that might start to answer your question there. Um, uh, and yes, you can delete pictures um, uh, at will. Um, you know, there's no reason you can't uh, have some control over what you're storing on the account. There is automatic backup and sync. There's also, you don't have to do it automatically. You can just pick and choose what you want to back up. Um, now, uh, getting started, you just need to sign up for a Google account. If you're already, say, using Gmail, uh, you are good to go um, because you are now having access. It, it probably your um, Google recognizes you and uh, you have access to all its apps. Um, the only other thing you need to do if you're wanting to back up photos from your smartphone or iPad is you need to download the Google Photos mobile app uh, to the, uh, one of those devices or both of those devices. Uh, and then that will be an app that sits on your home screen on your phone and you can just tap that to bring up your photos. Uh, and then uh, you'll wanna activate it to uh, back up and sync. So I am gonna just walk through real quickly here um, how that process looks. Um, make sure this comes through. Okay, is everybody able to see this? Uh, this is my phone screen. Um, okay, great. I'm gonna open up, uh, whoops, that's not what I wanted to open up. I need to open up Google Photos. So uh, I'm gonna look in my, there we go. Look through my apps and I have brought up my uh, photo library. Uh, right up here, you will find in the corner and it's showing that it's backing up some new photos right now. Um, but you'll find probably your initial or some icon up here. Uh, you can click on that. As soon as you download the app, you may not have your photos uh, showing up here yet, but click on that. Uh, it will show you uh, 
your photo settings. You can manage your account and everything else. I'm gonna go down to photo settings and I wanna click on backup and sync. And I just wanna make sure that this is turned on. Um, if it's not, it would uh, be, this white dot would be um, over to the left and you wouldn't see any of that blue uh, area at all. Um, you can see here that I've chosen the high quality uh, rather than the original quality right now. Um, and uh, that's all there is to it to set up that automatic backup and sync. The other thing, and I'm gonna show you why shortly, uh, you may wanna consider is grouping similar faces together. If you've got a lot of people, uh, pictures of uh, family members, friends, things like that, and you want to be able to find specific pictures in which they appear, say uh, a vacation uh, with a friend from five years ago, rather than going through your photo library, this makes it very easy to find. Uh, I'm going to talk in a little more depth about that. And Google, unlike some of the other uh, similar options out there, uh, allows you to do that with pets as well. So that is pretty much the setup on a mobile device. What, any, what, uh, any questions there? Yeah, what about um, where it says, um, your, my backup is off now. And then I want to turn it back, I want to turn it back on. And then below that, it says I can free up 135 gigabytes that's been, you know, it's been already backed up. That means I can free them off my phone. That, now, if I go and sign back up, for Google Photos backup, is it going to pick up everything I've taken since I turned it off? Uh, yeah, it would. Okay. Um, anything that you don't want backed up anymore um, that you've deleted, you would probably want to delete it from your device as well. Um, however, uh, anything that you want to delete from your device but leave in the Google Cloud, uh, you can do. I could go into my phone right now and delete a bunch of photos. They're still going to be in my account, uh, my Google Photos. Uh, and file. then how do you take them from your Google Photos? Uh, uh, put them on a phone drive. Uh, I will. I'm, I'm going to walk through that in a few minutes right, and good. show you how that's done. Good. Yeah. yeah Scott, is, Google photos, is Google Photos a subset? a Google Drive so that whatever is in Google Photos also comes up in Google Drive? It won't appear in Google Drive. Um, it Google Drive sort of operates separately. However, all of that counts toward anything you're uh, using as backup with Google is going to count toward that gigabyte limit. So because when I pull up Google Drive, I see my photos taking up space. Is that because somehow I've inadvertently got them in two um, different spots? You know what? It um, <laughs> if it is taking up space, um, it doesn't really matter if it's showing up there and it's taking up space. It it's that's going to happen regardless um, if okay. you're using Google Drive. So um, yeah, uh, I, I see wouldn't your worry point. about yes. that. <laughs> okay, thanks. Yeah. Yes, Hiroko. Yes, uh, I have a I have a quite primitive questions. I pay monthly, I believe, ninety nine cents to Apple, so that I have an unlimited storage. I never, I I had an account with uh, Google Photos for a long time, but I never knew about it. I have to, I realize for the first time now. So up to now, all the photos appears to have been stored, and uh, um. I, I storage, I, I cloud, I cloud. Storage simultaneously on, uh, uh, how do you call this, it's the current one. Google so, Photos. Yes, in, so if I want to take a pictures, uh, pictures to be stored only on a Google Photos alone, what settings should I do before taking pictures? Um, you would just want to turn off your iCloud backup in your settings. Each time I take photos. Uh, I would just turn it off permanently for um, photos. I see. Okay. Yeah. 
And that way it will quit backing up on the iCloud. But if you've got your Google photos uh, turned on to back up and sync, it, all of that will go up to, uh, to Google photos. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Hi. Yes. Question. Um, so do you have Google Drive by virtue of having Gmail? Yeah. Yeah. And so your Gmail and everything is backed up to Google Drive? Um, yeah, um, if, yeah, exactly. Um, they may sit on different, you, Google Drive is kind of uh, sort of like a big folder that you can store uh, documents and things like that on. Um, but there is, the whole suite is called Google One. And so anything that you are using to store on Google, whether that be documents or uh, Google Photos or anything like that, uh, is going to count toward that storage limit. So, well, go ahead. so say I have this 15 gigabytes, right? And I'm using Google Drive to store some documents, uh, some Word documents or something like that, or maybe some PDFs. And uh, I am also storing, uh, uh, say, a lot of pictures and things like that. Collectively, that counts toward that 15 gigabyte limit before I'd have to start paying. Well, do I have to have Google Drive? No, no. I, somehow it's on there. I never deliberately put it there. Yeah. Um, how do I yeah. get out of it and just use Google Photos? Uh, you would just need to go to your account settings on Google. Are you using, uh, you're using Gmail, right? Yeah, um, but I have a MacBook Pro. Okay, that's what I'm using. So um, I'll walk through that real quickly. I'm about to uh, share my uh, Google account on screen and I'll show you how to get into your account and uh, work on some of that. Okay, and then I could download Google Photos app from the Apple App Store, or the yeah, mm -hmm. and then only store photos, right? Mm -hmm. Not documents or anything else, right? Well, okay, thank right. you. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and there it. Let me see. All right, there's a question about cell data usage. Um, uh, you can, uh, uh, if you go to the settings on your uh, Google. Photos app, it allows you to choose between using cellular backup and not using cellular backup. Um, I have that turned off because I'm fine waiting for the backup to start when, when I'm near a Wi-Fi connection. I don't need it to be using up my cell data plan in any way. So, uh, so um, that is uh, an option you have if it's really important to you to have that immediate backup. Um, you can keep the cell uh, data capability on. And how do you get into that uh, to turn it off? Okay, let me uh, let me go back to that. I pay for my minutes. Stop. Okay, yeah. All right, just a sec. Okay, it's not broadcasting. So, uh, let me try to do this another way real quickly. All right. Trying to show my phone screen again and it's not cooperating. Um, okay. Let me see if I can show it on uh, I'm going to see if I can show this because my phone's uh, not really cooperating here. Uh, I've got uh, some uh, options here. Um, somewhere in here, if you go to your settings, uh, you should be able to um, uh, activate and turn off. Here we go, right here. So if you go into your settings, uh, Google you, Drive or Google Photos or what's in Google Photos. All right. So I'm going to blow this up here a little. Uh, so when you open up Google Photos, you'd click here. You go to Photo Settings. You go to Backup and Sync, and open that up. You'll click Backup and Sync, but down here at the bottom, it I think it defaults to having that backup on cellular data off. 
So um, you would have to turn that on in order to uh, have that happen anyway. So chances are it's not backing up on your cellular plan, right? Using your cellular data right now. So it just backs up on Wi-Fi. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, okay. thanks. Yeah, sure. Let me move out. Um, okay. Um, if you want to use, and I'm going to walk through this now, if you want to use um, the, uh, or get into your photos on your desktop, um, that is very easy to do as well. Um, you just access, you just call up Google uh, and you can upload photos that are sitting, say, on your desktop or laptop. If, say, you've taken them with a digital camera uh, and downloaded them uh, to your uh, computer, uh, you can just drag and drop those into your account. Uh, so that's a real simple process. Um, I am going to open up a browser. Yeah, there we go. So is everybody able to see the uh, Google homepage here now? Okay, uh, here again are my account settings. Um, and if you see this grid here, uh, that's where you get into all your Google apps. So if you are keeping a Google calendar, that'll show up here. Anything you have on Google Drive will show up. Uh, they're all sitting as separate apps. Uh, so if I go to photos, it brings up my photo library. Um, but I can also go in here and I can look at my account and I can see uh, right now, Google One, there we go. Um, I've got some documents I need to clear out, but Google One, that is uh, what, uh, that represents everything I'm using on Google. I do have Google Drive on here and uh, Google Photos, as well as a calendar. Um, so all of that is being backed up. As you can see, I'm getting close to my limit. So uh, I may have to clear out some things or upgrade. So all you need to do to ever get into your account is uh, either click on this or uh, go to this uh, uh, grid here uh, and these nine dots and get into your account that way to control that. And once you're here, uh, what's gonna come up is uh, your library, just sort of a, a photo uh, stream or a camera roll. Uh, these are all uh, the photos I've taken with the most recent showing up here at the top. And there, were, there was a lot of snow. <laughs> here in the DC area last week. So I went outside and took a lot of pictures. Um, if I want to share a photo, um, I can come here and I can go to my share symbol and click on that. And I can uh, send this to anybody I want just by typing in say their phone number, if I wanna send it to them by text, if I wanna put in their cell phone number or uh, just by email, if I know their email address. The other thing I can do is just create a link, um, copy that link, and then I can just paste that into an email and send it to uh, whoever I want that way. And I can send it to several people at once. Um, the other option they give you is to post the photo directly to Facebook or Twitter. So those are um, some options for sharing. Um, if I want to, you'll notice down here, I can go to albums. Um, and albums <clears throat> are going to look like this. Um, now, some of these I have set up myself. Some of uh, up here, these are all organized for me. But if I go down here to the um, albums here, these are all I've set up from vacations and uh, gatherings and things like that, <clears throat> mainly to be able to share them with other people who were there. So, you know, here's a family vacation from a couple of years ago. I can go up here, I, I labeled this album, I can go up here and I can share this uh, with anybody I want. 
uh, the same way that I would an individual photo. And if I want to create a new album, that's very simple to do. I can just give it a title. Say I want to get pictures of, uh, have a photo uh, album of dogs. And then I can go in here and I can just start choosing them. I can also do a search for dogs and every dog picture I have, any photo with a dog in it will show up and I can add it in there. Uh, now I have a dog photo album down here. Now, if your photo of a dog doesn't have do a dog name on it, it still sees the picture and knows it's a dog? Exactly. Like, like Google Lens, I guess. Yeah, and, and I'm gonna uh, walk through this a little more to show you how, uh, how interesting this is. Um, so I just did, you notice I just did that search with dogs. Um, let's say that I want to take a look at all the pictures I've taken of sunsets. I want to find a sunset picture to print out and frame. Uh, every picture that has a sunset in it and then some is going to show up here. Now I need to emphasize, I never tagged these or labeled them or did anything with them uh, as they were being, before they were backed up. Um, say I want to get a little more specific, and I remember taking a sunset picture in Amsterdam uh, several years ago. I can't remember exactly when, um, but I know I have one somewhere. Uh, if I type that in, voila, that is the photo. I was able to narrow it down very easily to that. Uh, suppose that I want to take uh, look at pictures of my wife um from uh I, i'm sorry there's some feedback noise or uh, other people hearing that yeah okay let me um stop for a second i'll make sure i've got everybody on mute and maybe that oh, will i don't hear it okay Okay. Um, if you do have a question, just unmute yourself, but I've got everybody on mute right now uh, just to eliminate any background noise. Um, okay. So uh, say I want to look at pictures of my wife from a vacation we took to California. Uh, there we go. This was in uh, Northern California a couple years ago. It's even catching pictures of her where she is way in the background. Uh, it's recognizing her face. So how is all that happening? A um, couple of things are going on behind the scenes uh, as, uh, your, as Google is backing up your photos. So one of the things that it is doing is reading the metadata uh, on each of your pictures. Um, so this metadata is the information that is stored in each photo uh, and that could include the date and the time that the photo was taken. Uh, it uh, may include the uh, device that you use to take the photo. So if you took a photo with a Samsung Galaxy, it would record it as that. If you took it with an iPhone 8, it would record it as that. Uh, and if you have uh, location services turned on your phone, say to use for uh, Google Maps or something like that. I think there's sort of a global uh, overall setting for uh, uh, location services that you can use on phones. Um, it will record the location in which that photo was taken. Uh, and uh, those data travel with the photo as it's stored in different places. It's, it's like a embedded in that photo, sort of invisibly. So that is how I am able to find photos via location. Um, and the other thing that's going on is that there is some artificial intelligence built into this. So they are, the Google Photos is recognizing everything from animals and plants and uh, events and objects, places, and putting them into individual albums. Um, it's also, even if it's not in one of those categories, which I'll show you in a minute, uh, you still could do a search and possibly find what you're looking for just by using a keyword. 
Um, and uh, it uh, also groups each face into its own album. And that allows you, it's not gonna know the name that belongs to that face, but it allows you to do that, to tag that person uh, very easily. And from there, uh, you can go ahead and um, uh, do easy searches for people like that. So uh, if I go back here, you'll see how all of this is arranged. So if I go up to things, this is how it's uh, already categorizing some things. Uh, and as I scroll down here, you'll see everything from flowers to churches, towers, waterfalls, uh, screenshots. Uh, and uh, further I go down, uh, I can see beaches, um, sunsets should be somewhere here, but even if it isn't, I was able to do a search based on that. Um, so uh, you, even if you don't see uh, some noun here, uh, you could still possibly do a search to find what you're looking for. Yeah, you know, it uh, recognizes events based on either the date or what's going on in the background. Uh, so uh, it will, group them according to say event, birthdays, things like that. Uh, you can go over to places and you'll see here uh, all the uh, location listings here uh, where the photos are grouped together. And uh, you here are pictures from Paris. Everything I took with a cell phone in Paris is showing up here. Uh, you scroll down here, it gets even narrower um, I think somewhere up here, there's the Netherlands. If I go down a little further, uh, I start to see cities within the Netherlands. So it, it goes from pretty broad to a lot more granular. Uh, here you've got Amsterdam, go down a little more and uh, I'm likely to find other Dutch cities. Uh, I'm looking here to see maybe Rotterdam, Delft. So, uh, it gets uh, that narrow for you. And then lastly, uh, you'll see here, this is my people library, people and pets. Um, and there are names attached uh, here to these at the top of the list, as you'll see here. Um, every face that appears uh, on, a right, on a pretty frequent basis in my photo, well, not even frequent necessarily, sometimes just people who appear once, uh, in all the photos I've got backed up in Google Photos are appearing here. Further I go down, the more I start to see people, uh, I don't recognize people who were probably on the periphery of a photo I took. Um, and I don't know who they are. I don't really have to worry about that. Um, but if I uh, go up here, I've still got some people I haven't uh, tagged, uh, even though their faces are grouped together. So let's take this guy. This is my nephew, Mason. Uh, as you'll see here, all of the photos in which he appears show up here. But if I went to try to do a search for Mason, uh, maybe his birthday, well, let's just say Mason. Uh, it actually did find one. How it did that, I don't know. Let me try another one. Usually it might find one photo uh, and who knows how. Uh, let me see. Yeah, Nate already shows up. Anyway, I know I have a lot more photos of Mason than just this. Somehow it's, I don't know how it recognized that that's him. Uh, but if I wanna make sure that I get every photo I want of him, I'll just go down again to his face and I will add in where it says, uh, add, whoops, let me do that again. All right. Where it says add a name, I just click on that and I type in his name. And now uh, it may take a few minutes to index, but I should be able to do a search for him and every picture, and yeah, there we go every picture in which he appears shows up. Now, now, when that picture goes back into your phone or wherever, will it have that name on it? Yeah, you because can. it's synchronized with my phone. But I mean, is it going to be on the picture itself or just in the properties? 
Um, it'll just be in the properties. Oh, good. Wow. Yeah, it's easier than naming everybody. It was you take it. Beg your pardon. How did know you that one picture was in Amsterdam? Um, because of the location services. Um, I had those turned on in my phone oh, okay. when I took it. Okay, mine's turned off, so I don't. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that, that is pretty much the uh, sorting aspect uh, of everything. Uh, any questions I can answer on those? Anything you want me to walk through again? Well, I, I, I have like 48 gigabytes backed up of my photos. Mm -hmm. Now, how do I take all of them and put them on my, I have a five gigabyte thumb drive. Yeah. How do I put them all on my thumb drive or whatever I want to put them on or in yeah. my computer okay uh let's take uh let's just take one photo here say i want to save this um i can go here and i can click download and it will save to my computer uh from there i can then transfer it over to that thumb drive i, I remember going in like, like it, it put it categorizes them by dates and yeah. I remember several months ago hitting that whole date, whole month rather, and and transferring that onto my phone, mm -hmm. or into my into my uh, thumb drive. Scott, could you please repeat doing that? Yeah, sure. Uh, if I go say this one, uh, and I want to uh, move this to uh, a thumb drive or something like that. Uh, I can just download it like that. I'm trying to see if there is a drag and drop that I can do as well. Looks like it. I can also just drag and drop this photo or I can take a group of photos, say uh, all of these. Now, did you drop it on your computer? Or your I just dropped it on my, uh, yep, yeah, on my desktop, but there uh, I could, uh, if you call up, um, if you're seeing this right now, this is, uh, uh, you know, I can go down here and probably if I had a thumb drive plugged into my computer, uh, it would show up somewhere in here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I could just move those directly from here over into there. Now, I have a two terabyte laptop. So I, I think I'm going to take all my photos out of Google Drive and put them on the laptop. Yeah, you could do that too. And yeah. now if I start taking uh, backing up again, it's not going to take those photos and back them up again, is it? Um, if they're still sitting on your phone, it might. Well, because, I'm going to put them, oh yeah, but, but it won't yeah. take them off my laptop. But uh, yeah, um, if, uh, if you're um, taking them off, so you're talking about taking them off your laptop onto your computer? No, 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 after I take all my photos off of the Google Drive, put them on my laptop. Yeah, um, if you move them onto your laptop, uh, you'd want to um, then delete them here. But you'd also, if you're still having the automatic backup and sync, I turn you want to delete them from your phone too, because otherwise it will just re back them up. Why would you do that? The possibility of losing and having your computer locked. Well, no, no, then I'll take them, put them on my thumb drive from yeah. there or something, sort them out. Yeah, I, I agree what you say, but I, now I'm going to eventually put them all on a thumb drive or uh, I have a four terabyte Westel backup too, like when I can figure out how to use it. Yeah. Okay. What range of a thumb drive is compatible with a MacBook? I'm sorry, I didn't hear all of that. What brand of thumb drive is compatible with a MacBook? Um, I I think most, uh, the problem with a lot of new MacBooks is they have no uh, input for just about anything other than plugging in the computer. This is an old one. Very okay, old. that's good. Then you should be able to take just about any, um, any thumb drive and plug it in there and it should work. I don't think there's any, uh, there are any compatibility issues. Uh, my, I just upgraded to an iPhone MacBook um, Pro or iPhone Mac, a, uh, a MacBook Pro, a new one about six months ago. 
Um, but my old one, which I got like in 2011, uh, it still had all those ports in it and I yeah, can just plug yeah. any thumb drive in there and, and use it. Yeah, it doesn't have to be initialized or anything like no. way back when. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, other questions? I have a question, not necessarily exactly about this topic, but I noticed you have iOS photos too. Like I have those, I have all those photos on my um, iPad. How do those interact with Google Photos? Um, they would interact if you've got Google Photos turned on. Um, and uh, I have it set up to back up uh, onto, uh, onto your Google Photos account. So even if it's an iOS photo, um, it Google Photos works with any kind of um, uh, Apple device, and iOS is the operating okay. system that Apple uses. So right. So yeah. do you use them both? Uh, have... Right now, I do, um, okay. and that is largely because I am teaching classes on iCloud, on Google Photos. And on Amazon Photos, and I want to make sure I know what I'm talking about. So I'm using all three right now. Right. Okay. Um, but you I, wouldn't have to. I could get rid of my iOS photo. Right. Okay. Right. Well, um, they'll always be iOS photos um, because it was taken with that operating system. But uh, but the, essentially, what they are are JPEGs, or yeah, oh. JPEGs usually, um, which okay. is a standard universal uh, uh, digital image uh, format. So. Okay. So you'd be fine. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Scott, there's a question on the chat about uh, having the location turned on the cell phone that you didn't respond to. Um, okay. Uh, so that should be in your settings. Uh, what kind of phone are you using? Is it an iPhone or? No, I have an, an Android, but it was a, a question to, uh, to you from a John. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, I have, uh, I don't have an Android, so I don't know exactly where it would be on an Android phone, but you would just have to go into your overall settings on your phone uh, and uh, go into location services. It should appear somewhere in there uh, and make sure that's turned on and then it will record the, lo it, it's basically tracking you. So it will recognize where you are um, I know on the iPhone, um, it's, um, I think I have my, find my iPhone. So that sort of automates it in case I lose my phone, I can track it down, but. Okay. Um, did I miss any other questions in the chat? I think. Um, yes. Deborah had one about, uh, the, uh, Google backup and sync. Um, Okay, because it saved every document, uh, book, download, all the storage was used up, then I was getting messages, my Gmail wouldn't work. Um, yeah, so uh, the answer to that is to either remove some of the things that you backed up there. Um, it, uh, if it's backing up all your photos and documents uh, and just to cut down on that size, or uh, to uh, upgrade to a uh, higher level account uh, with more storage space. Um, is that, um, did, did you uh, install the backup and sync, uh, Deborah, on a, uh, on a phone or on your computer? On my computer, and um, boy, was that a mistake. <laughs> okay, so that that's probably why it was just backing up everything uh, imaginable. Right. It would just be a matter of going through and removing the things, say that you don't want on there, or you know, right. say you've got, uh, you've hit that fifteen gigabyte ceiling, you may want to pay twenty dollars to get a hundred gigabytes or something like that. Right. I did have to throw money at it just to even have my Gmail still working, but yeah, yeah word to the wise. Cause yeah. I, I do genealogy yeah. research. So it just, it's insane. Oh, yeah. And I'm trying to delete stuff and I'm still not getting anywhere. So I'm, 
it's just a mess. I'm going to have to work with Google support because they don't make it easy to get rid of things. No, no, uh, no. A lot of these don't, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> and uh, there's a question about which of the three uh, storage uh, services that I like the best, iCloud, Amazon, or Google. Um, I kind of like Google um, just because of the interface. Uh, that seems to work with the way I like to search things uh, more than the others. Uh, but, uh, you know, everybody has their own preferences about how they like to look for things or how much they need uh, in terms of uh, uh, flexibility in uh, searches and things like that. So uh, personally, mine's Google, but um, everybody, you know, teach his own. So probably have time for one more question um if anybody has one i have one sure it would there be a negative to use more than one service it's like um i have because of the uh, the the space i use google for my pictures, I have all, I put all my photos there, mm -hmm. but then I use some of the other uh, drives and storage for just like I do genealogy also. Okay. And you can, and if you just, you know, have put all of it on another storage, you're getting all the free storage, but yet you know where things are if you keep up with it. Right. And so is there a negative to that, to spread them across? No, no. I mean, the only barrier that might be there, and I don't even know if it's a barrier, but, um, you know, is uh, if you end up paying for more than one service, if you're willing to do that, that's fine. Um, uh, but, um, but there's no, nothing, if you have something like say Amazon Prime, uh, and I do teach a course on um, uh, Amazon Photos, uh, which does mm -hmm. the same thing as Google Photos, a little bit of a different interface. But uh, if you have Amazon Prime, you have unlimited storage space. Mm -hmm. uh, so that um, and, you know, you don't have to worry about reducing the size of the photo or anything like that. Uh, so um, if, you know, you have that operating and you're also storing some things on Google, there's no, no problem doing that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Isn't there like five different places? There's two, one or two more other places, aren't there? I can't remember the names, but where you can uh, probably, yeah, I'm sure there are. Um, I know that there's, um, uh, well, there's uh, Dropbox. Yeah, Dropbox, um, that was one of them. Yeah, which a lot of people use. And there are a few other services yeah. out there. There's uh, Microsoft OneDrive is another. Right, OneDrive. That's, it. That's yeah. the two I was thinking of. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I uh, just want to let you know that I'll be sending you these key takeaways from the class, um, uh, talking about uh, customizing albums and sharing photos and uh, just reminding you uh, how things are categorized for you. Uh, I'll also send a, um, uh, an attachment that just kind of walks through, uh, just has some uh, screenshots of the setup process with uh, with Google Photos uh, for, for reference for you. Um, just want to tell you about some related classes coming up. Uh, there is a class on, on Gmail on useful things you may not know, uh, and also one on uh, Instagram on uh, sharing, using that. That's a social uh, media platform for uh, sharing photos. So uh, if you're interested in learning more about that and haven't used it, uh, that's an option for you. My next classes, uh, I'm teaching one later today, uh, in fact, in about an hour, on um, how to take great pictures with your iPhone. And it kind of walks through a little bit of photo composition, but also so, uh, kind of walks through the features, uh, camera features on your, on your iPhone uh, to show you how you can enhance uh, the pictures you're trying to take. And then there is one coming up uh, on uh, Friday, I believe, on iPhone basics that just looks at everything on the iPhone, on setting up location services and things like that, um, uh, 
uh, customizing the way your home screen looks and so forth. So you can find those uh, by just clicking on view schedule in the email that you're gonna get uh, shortly after uh, we sign off today. You'll also have uh, some class notes down here with some key takeaways. Uh, you also have a link to this feedback form. Uh, we always love to hear what you thought of our classes, how we can improve them, what worked for you, what didn't. It defaults to four stars, which you can lower or raise based on how you felt about the class. Um, but any constructive uh, ideas or suggestions you have for the class would be uh, really welcome. And if you have some ideas for another class that we could start offering that you're not seeing in our, uh, in our class listing, something you'd like to learn uh, and would love to see us create a class around, by all means, drop that in here, or you can always just email us at help at getsetup.io with that suggestion. We're always looking for new classes to, uh, to create. So uh, also, again, if you would like a uh, copy of the recording of this uh, session, you can um, email help at getsetup.io as well to request that. Uh, you're always welcome back to take this class again. Uh, I, I teach it about once or twice a week, typically. So I um, uh, would love to see you again and walk through anything uh, you need me to.